Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Over 50 and Flourishing. I'm your host, Dominique Soxa, and today we have such a cool guest with us. Peter Mangan. In 2017, Peter founded the Freebird Club, a rapidly growing social and travel community specifically for us over 50s. It's a unique platform where members can connect, share travel tips, arrange meetups, and book affordable homestays with other like-minded people. Peter is a true visionary within the positive aging space with extensive experience in fostering connections among older adults and igniting their passion for travel. Peter's journey highlights the transformative power of travel for people in their golden years. Today, he's going to share his insights, his experiences, and the incredible impact the Freebird Club is having on its members. So let's dive in and explore how we can continue to flourish and embrace new adventures after 50. Welcome, Peter Mengen. Today's episode of Over 50 and Flourishing, sponsored by Jenny Kane, one of my favorite clothing brands for a reason. My goodness, the quality speaks for itself. Iconic cashmere sweaters, their sweaters during the winter, the bomb. During the summer, fantastic. They've got super luxe, lightweight sweaters, perfect for spring and summer, especially if you're getting dressed up for an evening. But I always get cold in a restaurant or anytime I'm indoors, and I just love having a nice, relaxed knit to put on top of a sleek little black dress. You can find your new uniform at JennyKane.com. Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code Dominique15 at checkout. That's 15% off your first order, J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com, promo code Dominique15. Like getting dressed, be one less thing to worry about. Embrace your summer aesthetic with Jenny Kane. Support for today's episode comes from Honey Love, one of my absolute favorites, especially when it comes to bras and shapewear. Oh my gosh, what a game changer. And Honey Love does the job, but it does so without pinching. It gives wonderful support without the uncomfortable wire. Ouch, nobody loves that. Honey Love is not just supporting women, it's empowering women. Treat yourself to the best bras on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash over 50. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off honeylove.com slash over 50 to find your perfect fit. After your purchase, the last where you heard about them, please support our show. Tell them we sent you. Honeys, you deserve this. Free the pain and discomfort. Keep the support with Honey Love. Shout out for Claritin for supporting this episode and providing us with samples. I have been sneezing today, and I'll tell you what, the pollen here in Texas is everywhere. Luckily for those of us who live with the symptoms of allergies, we can live Claritin clear with Claritin D. Designed for serious allergy sufferers, Claritin D has two powerful ingredients in just one pill that relieve your allergy symptoms and decongest your nose so you can breathe better. Are you ready to live life as if you don't have allergies? It's time to live Claritin clear. Fast and powerful relief, just a quick trip away. Find Claritin D at the pharmacy counter. Ask for Claritin D at your local pharmacy counter, you don't even need a prescription. Go to Claritin.com right now for a discount so you can live Claritin clear. Use as directed. Hey, Peter, so good to have you today all the way from Ireland, one of my favorite countries. Great to, great to meet you, Dominique, and, and thanks a million for the opportunity to speak to you today. I'm glad oh, you like absolutely. Ireland. <laughs> oh, how do you not love Ireland? I mean, since this is about travel, today's episode, can we just start with your amazing country and how beautiful it is? I was sharing with you before we even started that when I was in television news back in Houston, we partnered, our TV station partnered with the International Festival and the host country was Ireland. And they sent me and a photographer overseas to cover Ireland for an entire week. And we did the whole coastline. You are on the um, Southwest coast and it is, it's one of my favorite countries. It's so lush and green and beautiful. Yeah, in fairness, we, we do the green stuff pretty well. And the coastal scenery is absolutely spectacular. I agree with you. Unfortunately, you don't always get the weather to appreciate it in all its glory. But um, yeah. in a way, that makes it even finer when, you, you know, when the sun does burst through the clouds and, and you catch a glimpse of the, the light on the, on the coastal uh, scenery and, and, and the, you know, the, the rugged edges of the West Coast. Yeah, like, I can't disagree mm. with you. It is a beautiful spot. 
It is. I remember visiting the Cliffs of Moher and, and to your point, it had just sort of this misty rain over it. And it was almost just so, sort of eerie and spooky. And you just, it didn't look real. It looked like a scene from a movie. And I mean, I don't know, do you, do you take it for granted being there or is it as special to you as it is to people like me? We do probably take it a little bit for granted, for those of us who live down here. But, you know, even when I go up to the Cliffs, which are maybe 150 miles from where I am, you know, my breath is taken away by them as well, you know, so... Um, you might yeah. take your own little patch of it for granted, but, but, you know, once you go up the coast a little bit further in places you haven't seen so often, it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty spectacular, but, um, yeah, it really know, is. It really is. You, you live a life well-traveled. I mean, you really do. And you have a company or an operation that you call free bird club. And what I love about it is that you are catering to people 50 plus to get them out, to get them to travel. So I, I love this. You know, my demo is over 50 and flourishing. That's what we want to do. And, and travel is so important, but so is a sense of kinship and camaraderie. So how did you start this? Yeah, so, I mean, you really encapsulated the whole raison d'etre of, of Freebird Club very well there. Um, the reason I started it, actually, um, I, I'm in my 50s myself, now my early 50s, so it's, time has caught up with me. I'm in the mm -hmm. demographic as well. But essentially, a few years ago, yeah. I built a house in the southwest of Ireland, where I'm from. Uh, I was living and working in Dublin at the time. And my dad, who was a retired widower, uh, living alone uh, and maybe struggling a little mm -hmm. bit with that stage in his life in his early 70s, um was yeah. well he was still living here obviously but i built a house down here that i had planned to move into eventually um but along came airbnb and all of that and i started renting it out and my dad was the person who was on the ground meeting and greeting guests for me while i was away in dublin and so he really enjoyed this you know it gave him a whole new um way of meeting people and and he's a proud local man so he enjoyed telling people about the area what have you but over the course of a number of months some older guests came to stay people of a similar vintage to himself and all of a sudden mm -hmm. the social interaction went to a whole other level uh he was he was bonding with them in, in ways that ended up him taking them on sightseeing trips around the local area um nights in the pub and and dinners and maybe even the odd game of golf if they were golfers and it just opened up his social life in a way that was really enriching and rewarding. And he was having a lot of fun and it was a new lease of life for him. And meanwhile, on the other side, I was getting extraordinary reviews from these older adult guests who were saying that this interaction with my dad as a local was the best part of their trips. And, uh, you know, there was a pattern. It was, it was when people of a similar vintage were, were staying here in, in the house. And uh, I just felt that there's something going on here in the demographic. Uh, maybe it's that that uh, in my dad's case, possibly a bit of a yearning for social, more social connections in his life at that stage. Um, but even for the guests, you know, this kind of ability to connect with people on a human level that went way beyond the usual host guest interaction. I just felt that, it, you know, in the context of an aging society, we all know there's a demographic mm -hmm. wave of, of aging society. The average age is going up all the time. People are living longer. It's great. But within that, there is an issue of loneliness, which is well documented. It was being talked about as an epidemic even yes. before the COVID pandemic. And then COVID like, made everyone feel, get a taste of loneliness and, and isolation. Um, mm -hmm. We're told to isolate. But uh, I just felt when I saw something unfold in my close to home, close to my heart, that was mm -hmm. beneficial for my own dad and to you know, have new social connections, meet interesting new people in ways that he hadn't perhaps expected. And it was really good for him. And I just thought this was something that could be possibly replicated um, worldwide. And so because travel is the yeah. number one aspiration for older adults. And my dad wasn't actually the traveling end of the equation. He was the local um, and, and he mm -hmm. was getting great benefit. And I thought there must be a way to enable and empower older people to travel by connecting them with locals such that they both benefit. And it can be through accommodation, like a homestay, you know, the, the really kind of social element of, of old school Airbnb. But it doesn't even need to be that. It could be just, you know, meeting people on the road, so to speak. And so I set out to, to build something that was very bespoke and customized for the older demographic um, that could enable and empower them to travel in new ways, where even if they were lacking a companion or maybe they were a little bit um, nervous about going, taking that trip that they had mm. maybe dreamt of if we got if we got freebird club right if we if we did our jobs well with the vision of freebird club 
there would always be people that they could connect with in those places that they want to visit. That could be fairly close to home or it could be on the other side of the world. You know, it, it's not it's it's not exotic travel necessarily. It could be quite localized. Um, and that's what we set out to do basically with Free Bird Club. I love it. I mean, it's one thing to see a need. It's another to meet it. And you were personally touched by something and, and you had that epiphany of, you know what, it's not just my dad, it's many others out there. And what can we do? And I love the fact that you seized the day, so to speak, because so many people are moved by something, but they sit on it. You chose to act. So take us through that point of, okay, you know, I see there's a need here. I see there's a benefit. How did you then craft this program? And, and what were your first journeys like? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. And so it was kind of an epiphany. So I, I was I was just a, an Airbnb host, uh, albeit an absent one in Dublin mostly. Um, and when I was seeing this unfold with my dad, and um, and I was I guess I was I was in my mid forties at the time, and um, you know my dad was aging, and and I was concerned to a degree about him, even though he was you know he was fine overall. But yeah, so I was paying a lot of attention. I suppose, to him and seeing something that was mm. really improving his life uh, was pretty powerful, I think. And I was also admiring, I suppose, from afar, the whole Airbnb, the early Airbnb story. You know, I was I was uh, I worked in I was working in the university by the time at the time, by the way, um, in research and innovation. I was on the management side and uh, I was very aware of the, you know, the need to address problems with research, innovation and university spin outs and all that. So I kind of felt kind of subconsciously if the right idea came along that I would take a leap and and maybe go and, and push the innovation button and and try and maybe go down the entrepreneurial route and I guess this this um, idea was so compelling to me I could see I could see it unfold very quickly I could see it was scalable looking at the Airbnb model I was very well aware of the aging issues loneliness I knew my dad was far far from unique and uh it felt that this was, this was worth doing. You know, this wasn't just another business idea or a startup. I had no urge to be a founder. You know, I wasn't coming from that background or, or, or you know, I, that doesn't, although I liked the idea of innovation and all that, I wasn't out there to be a startup founder. But I just thought this was really worth doing and I could see a way to getting it done. But how did I actually start going from the idea? Essentially, I wanted to validate the concept that, because I, I was seeing a big picture in this. I really could see this being a global thing, a movement, really, for over over mm. 50s. Right. Um, probably most typically people in their 60s and 70s, you know, in the retirement uh, stage, probably is a sweet spot for this. But mm. as somebody said to me early on, you know, if you want to attract a typical 60-year-old, you say it's for over 50s. Um, and so I, that's, that, that's why <laughs> that's it's smart. over 50s. That's very smart. <laughs> yeah, it's just a psychology to that. Um, but I've tried to validate sure. it. So I, you know, I knew some people who were in the kind of startup entrepreneurial scene, and I just floated the idea, and I got pretty good feedback. But you know, everyone's going to tell you, "Oh, yeah, great idea." But I started looking for things that I that could validate it, and there was a program run out of the UK, um, Impact Hub, which is a, basically a, 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 an incubator for social impact ideas, and they had a very specific. Mm -hmm competition for ideas that could uh, address the challenges and opportunities of a rapidly aging society. And so I submitted an application for that. And before I knew it, I was selected. I was in London pitching and I was selected. So that was, and that, this was just with the idea. This was not even a business plan. This was well, a rudimentary business plan, but I was very early stage in, and uh, that was enough for me. So I actually got some time off work then in, in the university uh, three months to go to London and boot camp this, you know, in a very early stage um, ideas mm. um, innovation incubator uh, that was dedicated to the aging sector. It was called the Fellowship for Longer Lives. So very, very much uh, bullseye in terms of the fit. And through that, I got some coaching and mentorship and I did some focus group sessions with older adults. I was connected to um, Open Age, which is an organization in London um, based in London, where they have different centers for positive aging and people 50 up, etc. So I, I really had great access to um, to focus groups and, and potential potential customers for something like this. And so I was able to go to them routinely for uh, feedback on my idea. And so over the course of three months, I got to establish, I, I, I got my concept validated and I got a pretty well-fleshed out business plan um, and that was the start of it, really. 
and that's the very early days. This is that's wow. already like eight eight years ago or something like that. So um, I had to go back to my university job then, and then find a way to actually go and do it in in real you know in in real life by in real life. Yeah. Build it, actually build the platform and put a little bit of a team around it and actually go to market, um, which is I amazing. The next step. Well, you know what? Here, here's what I'm hearing. You know, it's one thing to have a seed planted and then say, OK, I'm just I'm going to go give this a try. Right. But you had the seed planted and you were incredibly intentional, logical, um, practical, analytical in how you went about this. I mean, nothing was left to happenstance. And I love that because that's also a really, really good seed to plant for somebody who wants to start a business, that there is so much that needs to be a part of that business startup. And it is research and it is time. It's not just kind of pie in the sky and let's see where things land. So I'm really, I'm grateful that you shared that with the audience. We're going to take a quick commercial break because I'm excited to hear after, on the backside, you know, once you had the foundation built for this, where it went and what some of those first experiences were like and the impact most importantly, because really that's what you're trying to do here is affect change and create impact in people's lives. My guest today is Peter Mangan with the Free Bird Club, a traveling group for people over 50, and that would be us. And we'll be back right after this. Today's episode of Over 50 and Flourishing, sponsored by Jenny Kane, one of my favorite clothing brands for a reason. My goodness, the quality speaks for itself. Iconic cashmere sweaters, their sweaters during the winter, the bomb. During the summer, fantastic. They've got super luxe, lightweight sweaters, perfect for spring and summer, especially if you're getting dressed up for an evening. But I always get cold in a restaurant or anytime I'm indoors, and I just love having a nice, relaxed knit to put on top of a sleek little black dress. Speaking of dresses, amazing, flowy summer dresses, just beautiful. Did I mention that they have so many things that can go inside your home as well, from candles to pillows, throws, perfectly curated decor. I mean, it goes on and on. You can find your new uniform at JennyKane.com. Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code Dominique15 at checkout. That's 15% off your first order, J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com, promo code Dominique15. Let getting dressed be one less thing to worry about. Embrace your summer aesthetic with Jenny Kane. Support for today's episode comes from Honey Love, one of my absolute favorites, especially when it comes to bras and shapewear. Oh my gosh, what a game changer. My new job in the morning has me wearing, you know, that kind of shapewear, cinching things in. And Honey Love does the job, but it does so without pinching. It gives wonderful support without the uncomfortable wire. Ouch, nobody loves that. Their uh, crossover bra, probably their best seller. It is a go-to. It offers all the traditional support of a regular bra without the underwire. Plus, it's got this mesh detailing there, and it adds just a little touch of sexy. It is just the right thing. Honey Love is not just supporting women. It's empowering women. Treat yourself to the best bras on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash over 50. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off. Off, honeylove.com slash over 50 to find your perfect fit. After your purchase, the last where you heard about them, please support our show. Tell them we sent you. Honeys, you deserve this. Free the pain and discomfort. Keep the support with Honey Love. Welcome back. My guest today is Peter Mandon, the founder of the Free Bird Club. And if you are watching this from home, your car, well, hopefully listening from your car, and you feel that itch to travel and you would like to do it with like-minded, like-age people, well, Peter Mandon has really come up with something for you. And his Free Bird Club, we were listening to the inception of it before the commercial break and how he noticed in his father just a sense of loneliness from being alone and isolated and suddenly having people, you know, come to the Airbnb and seeing that connection really got you going, Peter, and thinking, wow, you know, there's there's got to be something to this. And we were listening to how you started your business, which was so technical and so on point. And I appreciate that 
that you shared it with us. I'm so curious, once you got the groundwork laid, what, what were the next steps for you? Okay, so uh, the next step, really, I, I came back to my, my job in the university and uh, I tried to figure out a way to actually get this thing built. And so I, I guess I was lucky. In the university, I was able to identify somebody you know, with the technical skills, uh, a programmer who could build this in their spare time. And um, mm -hmm. so we built a prototype, quite simply. And uh, the idea with that was that we would, you know, do, we would test it with some people um, in a kind of a very light, light touch pilot and we did that while i was still working in the university and my, my 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 tech partner was also actually working in the university and uh we i suppose one important thing there is we actually applied for another competition which was the european social innovation competition run by the european commission and uh we won that actually and that gave us 50k and wow. that was uh, and some 50,000 euro which was amazing at that stage and it was still very early on all we had was the the prototype and uh, we had started doing a pilot and uh basically what that pilot looked like is i, I got some people through my connections in london having done the, the program the three-month program in london to come and stay with some people in my own locality my dad included and uh just to see how the experience was for them using our very basic prototype platform so we wrote tested the idea with a basic website and uh, we got feedback, etc. And from there, we and having won some money to to actually take it on, I left my university job and uh, my mm -hmm. partner went part time. And before we know, we were building a, a platform that we could go to market with uh, in which we actually launched to the market in, in early 2017. Um, and it was very basic. I mean, I look back at it now, it was really basic. It would not stand in any, even in the shadow of an, Air, an Airbnb, but it did, it did what it needed to do for us to get started. And so before we knew it, we, um, we, we got some good press from winning that, uh, social innovation competition, uh, including I was actually, believe it or not, around that time invited to be on a radio show in, based in San Francisco, um, which, huh. All of a sudden, I had a, a bit of a wave of American free birds joining up, and uh, so it was very exciting. We were we were setting the seeds for for something very international from the word go, and uh, people were book you know people were coming on as hosts. You know, the Airbnb thing had become a bit of a phenomenon, and it certainly facilitated yeah. us to get out of the way because um, maybe the fear of doing something like this it had gone a bit main you know had gone mainstream, albeit maybe not that mainstream for older adults, but. We were the version that made it feel m more accessible, perhaps. You know, I was saying this is a bespoke, customized club for like-minded over 50s, um, where the social element is to the fore. And, and some of the headlines we got, for example, was a social Airbnb for seniors. And that was a pretty good description um, of it. You know, mm -hmm. the whole idea is only social homestays. There's no vacant properties. You're staying with somebody. You get to know them. Um, in advance, there's, you know, the whole idea is that it's, it's about the interaction and the connection. So, okay. If I become a free birder, how does it work? Right. D do I go online? What's, what's my experience? How do I curate my experience? Yeah. Okay. So version one, and it's very important. There are two versions. There's the pre pandemic version, and then there's the flat line of the pandemic and version 2.0. <laughs> well. Isn't that the same for everybody? <laughs> yeah. But, well, can you imagine, like, honestly, like we went from yeah. winning awards as one of the best startup ideas in, in travel, you know, th th this kind of social impact thing for older people to being the worst possible idea right. overnight because older people yeah. traveling and staying in each other's homes for the purpose of social interaction was untouchable for. for right. At, and yeah, at COVID time, it was the last thing. And that's so unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. So. Version one, at that time, it was a social homestay club. So the idea was somebody could uh, book a stay in the home of another member, a host member, and that host member would have created not only a profile, every single member creates a profile describing themselves and their interests and describes a little bit about themselves so that others can get to know them a little bit. Mm. Um, and then anyone who becomes a host lists a spare room and they have a place listing that's familiar territory for you know Airbnb or other sites like that. But in our case, the profile of the person is probably more prominent than the, the actual accommodation listing, because as we as we like to say, it's about people more than places. Um, the purpose mm -hmm. of Freebird Club is social connections through meaningful travel rather than 
an accommodation right. site. And, and so the sure. idea basically was people would uh, stay with people that like-minded people that they found the profiles interesting and we would encourage them to get to know each other a little bit in advance of the stay. And that's what it was up to 2020, a social home stay club. And it was expanding and we were even talking to investors and winning some other awards and, and it was beginning to take off. And uh, we, you know, there were some great stories. We, we were hearing back from people who had these kind of homestays and people were really enjoying that kind of, uh, you know, connection and interaction, friendship forming. So they are starting to open up their homes and embrace this um, Airbnb concept and, and people are starting to come in. What are you seeing in terms of community and feedback? Yeah, so we, we were seeing a nice um, cohort of hosts uh, manifest around the place, particularly actually, uh, well, I have to say, the US was the number one place in terms of Freebird members, whether they were hosts or, 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 or guests, travelers, as we say. Um, it's proved very popular in the US. Uh, now, we're talking small numbers. We were we several thousand um, within the first two, two years, but it was beginning to grow nicely. And we were seeing, um, you know, maybe about 10% of overall members were becoming hosts, which is basically making a spare room available in their homes. And the bookings were beginning to pick up nicely. And we were, they were mostly international. Uh, a lot of visitors, in fact, from uh, the US coming to stay with guests in Ireland um, and indeed Europe as well. Uh, Italy was very popular in France, et cetera. And, mm. you know, we, because I suppose we're, it's a small, it was a small community growing, but a small community. Uh, we were closely in touch with the members who were having these experiences. And so we were getting the kind of feedback as to how it was all unfolding on the ground. And, you know, we were hearing wonderful stories about people, um, you know, having great, first of all, having a great time, but all the things that they would do together. So it, 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 it really was a case of when people were staying with their hosts and their home that they were actually spending quality time together for one better phrase you know yeah. the hosts would tend to bring sure. them to their local um favorite places or they might be an event in in the town or in the area and people were sharing that kind of um those kind of experiences together and that was very gratifying because you know you you can't really tell how it's going to go it could end up being very you know transactional in a way that some of the other websites end right. up being where people are just looking for cheap accommodation and it wasn't that it was actually the antithesis of that it really was these socially interactive mm. stays where people were, were were finding the common ground and were really in, enjoying each other's company to the extent that they were you know rhapsodizing really to to us and to others and we mm. were seeing that kind of um yeah i guess it was just it was catching on and it was we were getting some word of mouth uh new members joining as well so but I'll be, these were small numbers. We were in the thousands. We were growing. And we got to 2020. Uh, by the way, we had, we had gone to the UNWTO, the World Tourism Organization's first global tourism startup competition. And we picked up an award there for social impact, social innovation, and also uh, an investor partner award. And so there was a, an investment deal coming together now in early 2020. These were beginning to look very exciting. And uh, then the pandemic hit. And literally overnight, we were the worst possible idea. We, you know, it was just what we were trying mm. to do be done, and was very vehemently told shouldn't be done. Um, so it flatlined really, and and all the work uh, that had gone into it kind of well, I guess it, I won't say it was for nothing, but it, uh, it you know it, it yeah. completely halted everything. But I was able to keep it keep the lights on because we were a small team and. Uh, I could still do what needed to be done to keep the company intact, which was basically just pay a few bills and not obviously pay myself, but make sure that we didn't die in the pandemic. And that was very important because um, yeah. I was one, one thing about the pandemic, it made us the worst possible idea, um, an undoable venture. But the thing we were setting out to do with Freebird Club, which was address loneliness and isolation, the yeah. problem had gone you know, had, had magnified because of the pandemic. Loneliness and isolation That's right. across the board, every generation was suffering from loneliness. And all the stats were indicating that, the, you know, this problem that we were looking to solve or address had gone through the roof. And so if Freebird Club was ever going to be a good idea, it was going to be probably a better idea on the, in, on the mm -hmm. other side of the 
think, in the aftermath. So I just felt I can't let it go. You know, I got to hang around here. I got to find a way to yeah. hang in there such that when things open up again, we have a very creative solution that can help get older people back out there in circulation, doing the things that, that enrich their lives and to have fun again, you know? Um, mm. And so, yeah, so I guess really when I hit 2022, I was looking for the resurrection. Um, you know, there was there was nothing left really in the tank, but the idea was still yeah. intact. And I was, I was very driven to, to try and um, bring it back to life. I'm grateful that you weathered the storm and not a lot of, a lot of businesses suffered and many failed during that time because they couldn't survive meat overhead and take care of what they needed to take care of. So grateful. I mean, you, you made a very valid point. The need was great prior to 2020. The need was greater post COVID. And at least you were around to stick it out and to do it. You mentioned a word earlier on, and I'm so curious about it. You said a word transactional. You didn't want it to be transactional. It was more of a, a sense of community, a sense of fellowship, but is there is there a transaction that takes place to be you know in the free bird club? I mean, does the person who offers up their home do they get paid? Is the person who's traveling to the home are they paying? Is it a nominal amount? I mean, how do you figure all of that out? Yeah, so th there is. I mean, there is a financial aspect to it. Um, there, mm -hmm. anyone who is becoming a host can charge a rate per night for the accommodation. Um, so we have taken a little bit of that model um, and brought it into Freebird Club. But because of the nature of Freebird Club, which is all about community and enabling others, um, the rates that people charge tend to be less than you would find on other websites. So um, and yes. we encourage that. Uh, we, you know, it's mm -hmm. if you, if you're looking to make money, you know, if your primary goal is to make money, Freebird Club is probably not the place to be a host. Um, and the reality mm -hmm. is, Freebird Club, you know, it's it's not, you're never going to have guest after guest after guest in a conveyor belt kind of way that you can get, say, for example, an Airbnb. It's, it's, it's going to be periodic. You know, we, we don't have that kind of scale. We, certainly not now, but we, we um, you know, it, there might never be that kind of consistency that you get with, um, with, with the mega uh, home, home sharing platforms. And uh, so pe people are... Uh, People in the main are doing it for reasons that are much more about social interaction, meeting new people and, and having those kind of cultural exchanges uh, that travel allows. And that's really important. I mean, that's the DNA of Freebird Club. Uh, the other thing, though, is there's a, there, there are kind of three as there are three key things we want to achieve with Freebird Club or three problem areas that we want to address. One is loneliness and isolation among the older demographic. Number two is lack of travel opportunities for, for older people. A lot of people, you know, right. in, in research reveals a lot of people would like to travel more in their later years, but often feel they can't because they lack companions or perhaps they lack the confidence to go alone. And then the third part is a lot, the third element is a lot of people might struggle in retirement with inadequate pensions. And yet many are sitting yes. in empty nests with, with spare rooms. And there's very few opportunities to, to, to supplement your income in retirement. And mm -hmm. here is an opportunity to do it in a way that's accessible, that you might feel comfortable with. Um, and we want to empower that as well. So there's a there is a financial aspect that can benefit people. For, you know, for some people, it, mm -hmm. it, can, it can help them to age in place if they can generate a little bit of income yes. that can help the bills, et cetera. So we think it's an important element of it, uh, but we're trying to make sure that well, in our, in our um, I suppose, in our kind of encouragement and our advice to members, you know, it's not about charging a lot, but it is about, you know, helping to maybe maintain your own property. Um, but the whole, the whole issue really is around the connection first. And if there's some monetary benefit to host, we, that's fine, but it's not the, uh, the, the focal point of Freebird Club. Yeah. And you, you brought up such a good point. Um, I, you know, I know my mother in her later years was frustrated. She wanted to work. She, she still wanted to derive an income, but it's very hard, you know, and she was like that well into her eighties, but it, you age out of a workforce and you brought up a really good point. You can use your home as a revenue stream and you can use your home as a sense of welcoming and creating companionship. So really you, 
you, you knock off two things at once, you know, you can, you can make, you know, not to your point, you know, it's like conscientious charging, right. But also the companionship that you get and you open yourself up to rich experience. And I would have to think that a lot of your members have sort of become lifelong friends. Yeah, we have certainly seen people who have had relationships or have friendships developed from their initial stay and the stay has been reciprocated and they're yeah. still in touch. And I mean, it's de it definitely happens. And it was very important during the pandemic, actually. One of the things that, that did sustain the, the, the concept and sustain the idea of Freebird Club for me was I could still see that people were interacting with each other, even though there was no chance of anyone booking a stay, but people were reaching out to, to hosts in different areas and, and uh, talking about their, mm. their plans and their dreams to travel again when, when time allows. Um, so, I, you know, I could see it from every angle that there, were, there was this yearning for connection and people who had had stays together were, were building those kind of friendships. And by the way, they don't need to be lasting friendships. You know, the, the Freebird is not, mm -hmm. a, it's not, it's not a companion making for life um, type of platform, but it's about opening up the capacity to make new friends and, and have new experiences uh, in your later years. And some of those will be friendships and yeah. those will be just be great memories that you've had. Um, but sure. I'd, it's important, I suppose, to, to indicate that out of the pandemic as well, um, it struck me that, you know, we're limited in the current Freebird Club model by properties. It can only grow at the level, uh, you know, despite it being all about human mm -hmm. connections, we were curtailed in its growth by the number of properties that became available on the site. And I wanted to open it up beyond that, that, you know, the concrete was getting in the way of the connections, I felt. And so in the post-pandemic era, I wanted to create something that was more holistic and more open so that members could interact regardless of booking accommodation with each other. And so that's what we've set out to build with version 2.0. But the, I call it the Phoenix edition, the post-pandemic uh, Freebird 2.0. Wow. It's got a name. <laughs> that's impressive. In my head, in my head, yeah. it's not. <laughs> hey, it's not look, the I, I see the business wheels turning. <laughs> We're yeah. going to brand it. We're going to name it. So we're going to talk about 2.0 on the back side of this commercial break. You're listening to Over 50 and Flourishing. And my guest today is Peter Mangan with the Freebird Club. We'll be right back. Shout out for Claritin for supporting this episode and providing us with samples. I have been sneezing today and I'll tell you what, the pollen here in Texas is everywhere. Luckily for those of us who live with the symptoms of allergies, we can live Claritin clear with Claritin D. Designed for serious allergy sufferers, Claritin D has two powerful ingredients in just one pill that relieve your allergy symptoms and decongest your nose so you can breathe better. This double action combination of prescription strength allergy medicine Medicine and the best decongestant available relieves sneezing, a runny nose, itchy and watery eyes, an itchy nose and throat, and sinus congestion, and pressure with ease. Are you ready to live life as if you don't have allergies? It's time to live Claritin Clear. Fast and powerful relief, just a quick trip away. Find Claritin D at the pharmacy counter. Ask for Claritin D at your local pharmacy counter. You don't even need a prescription. Go to Claritin.com right now for a discount so you can live Claritin Clear clear. Use as directed. Welcome back. My guest today is Peter Mengen. He is the founder of the Freebird Club, which is such a neat opportunity for people over 50 to be able to travel. And it really started with an idea that he had from his dad of opening up the house as an Airbnb. But what you found, Peter, was that this brought your dad great companionship later in life. So you built this model on it on people over 50, basically opening up their homes, people over 50 traveling. And it was a sense of getting to see someplace new, but also someone new and forging some relationship and connection there, which is such a beautiful model and desperately needed as you were talking about loneliness, especially post pandemic. Um, in fact, there was an article today on uh, Merritt Street that loneliness is one of the biggest problems for people over age 75 and many women over age 75 are widowed. So it's you're really speaking to a large sector of my audience. And as you talk about the Freebird Club 2.0 post pandemic, I'm sure you know, so many questions to get to but safety how it works, where you get to travel, how you've expanded. So I'll kind of let you launch into all of that. Yeah, well, cer certainly safety is very important uh, for, for anyone um, 
you know, online and, and, and traveling in this kind of way, but um, particularly for this demographic. And, and so, yes. I mean, what we do with, first of all, with, with our club is there's an onboarding process when you sign up that everyone has to go through a, a process of, of registration and being verified. And uh, obviously, you know, we don't go as far as vetting, you know, police vetting or anything like that, but people do have to provide details that need to be verified in terms of their contact details. They have to, there is a payment to joining Freebird Club, a, a very modest payment, mm -hmm. but by doing that, there's a paywall that, um, and this came in fact out of my early focus group sessions where when I suggested it might be free, people said, well, if it's free, sure, anyone could be on it. Um, so a, a modest paywall is actually a good thing in terms of um, creating a benign barrier to entry that uh, increases the likelihood of only authentic people being in the club. But people's ID, we require mm. an ID that needs to be verified. Um, we also um, go through, a, you know, a, a list of questions with people who are, who are joining up um, that all, all get checked also alongside a, a profile photo, which needs to match with their ID, etc. There, there, I get, it's actually quite a, a quite a burdensome onboarding process, but it's required in all in order to verify the identity of people as best yes. we can. We also, uh, for anyone who's becoming a host, we require evidence of um, the proof of address and and uh, that kind of thing as well. So we do as as much as we can to make sure that people are who they say they are. They're living where they where they are, etc. But ultimately, I want with Freebird Club to have a level of um, really hands-on customer service so that if anyone has any concerns that we are on the other end of a phone that it's not a it's not a bot driven um customer service but that we're very we're very close uh to our customers in a way that they feel that they can contact us if there's if there's any um issues they want to discuss or if they have any concerns um but in terms of how it works, I wanted yeah I wanted to maybe differentiate version 2.0 from version one which was version one was just homestays, people traveling and staying in each other's mm -hmm. homes or hosting others. But Freebird 2, uh, Freebird 2.0, we wanted to open it up so that people could connect in ways that didn't require accommodation, booking a, a stay in somebody else's home. And so fundamentally what that looks like is the ability for members to connect with locals in those destinations they might be interested in visiting for number one, tips, advice, recommendations that might help them in planning a trip or might just make the idea of that trip more realizable. Um, and I suppose mm -hmm. empowering and emboldening them by, you know, somebody who's, who's living there, giving them the kind of information. Uh, number two, the ability to uh, meet people, to, you know, organize meetups with locals in that destination so that even if you are leaving home alone, that you can organize in advance, that you meet some people uh, in that destination to possibly do things together that might be just have a coffee or somebody might be willing to show you around or you might be interested in saying you might have similar interests because we are trying to match people based on interests as well. Um, mm -hmm. If you wanted to go to, for example, the theatre because, you know, you might search for a member there that is also interest, interested in the theatre. People doing things together is what we really want to encourage. And then the third part is the homestays, mm -hmm. but it's no longer just about homestays. That's kind of the uh, <clears throat> right. third leg of the, stu of the stool, so to speak. So in a way, it's um, in a way it, it, it's really like a true social network, but where it's all about people actually mm. getting out and about and meeting people in real life, um, and using technology as an, in, an, an enabler to do that. We don't have it yet, but we're looking to build in kind of more sophisticated technology, so that you know if you're looking for if you're interested in visiting a certain place, um, we through our uh, um, member recommender, we would recommend, you know, maybe the top 10 people to connect with based on similarity of interest, mm. compatibility, etc. cetera, um, just as a, an extra little nudge in terms of getting people to reach out and connect with, with the other person on the other side. So, and we don't have it yet, but we're also looking to create the capacity to buddy up with somebody. So you, what I've described so far is the traveler to local connection, but there's also the, the, um, uh, the plan to connect traveler to traveler. So if two people are interested in going to the same place, for example, they could they could find a travel buddy um, also, also interested oh, in that's neat. Trips together. We're not there yet. We're very early days with version 2.0, but that's where we, we want to take it so that, um, yeah, bringing people together to enjoy more meaningful travel, whether, whether it's connected yeah. with a local or fellow travelers on the road. So there's a lot to do yet. Well, it's... A 
It is. It's a beautiful model. And it's it's so great you launched and you made it through COVID and you will see 2.0 come to fruition in, in all of its glory. Uh, is this global travel? Are you guys everywhere? How does it work? It is. Um, it is global already. We have members in 35 countries already. And we just launched, by the way, 2.0 last summer. So um, we're, we're only getting out of the blocks, really, with, with this new um, with this new model. So um, but we already have members in 35 countries. The U.S. is still number one in terms of that's where uh, mm-hmm. about 45 percent of our members are from and about 75 percent of our membership are women. Um, we it, there definitely does seem to be uh, the idea of free bird right now or, or the classic free bird is is probably a woman in her uh, maybe mid 60s retired. Uh, looking to have more travel experiences, mm-hmm. looking to meet more people to, through travel. And uh, yeah, they're, they've seen Freebird as a way to do that. So we're, we're very excited about um, hopefully delivering the kind of, um, the kind of experience through the club that, that, that uh, seems to be growing in, in, um, in terms of people's appetite. There, there does seem to be a real wave now of, people, of older women particularly looking to travel, often solo, mm-hmm. but not looking, to, not looking to do it alone, but perhaps planning the trip right. and leaving solo, but meeting people through, um, you know, through, through these kind of encounters and connections and in, in, in their travel. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, Peter, I got a little taste of that. In October, I'll be hosting a trip. There are companies that will partner with, um, you know, people who are in my space to host trips with the audience. And, you know, I'm doing a trip to Greece the first week of October with 25 members of my community. And I was absolutely floored with how quickly that trip sold out for the very reason that you said. It's about sense of community. It's about women wanting to experience travel together, kind of a sisterhood and a camaraderie where you've got shared interests, shared uh, desires to see similar things and shared space in life. You know, it's the conversations that come from travel like that are invaluable. And I've done it once. I've done um, just sort of a um, a little midlife women's gathering out of, in, in Austin, you know, for a weekend. And what took place in just those two and a half days in terms of what was shared and the friendship that came from just that weekend was so powerful. So I really think that what you're doing is great for this audience. I mean, my audience is your audience. And and I love the fact that we can talk about this and, and let people know that there are opportunities out there for them if they want to travel, open up their home, or meet other people in their age and demographics. So Peter, let everybody know where to find Freebird Club and to sign up if they want to sign up or at least look and get more information. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're, we're at freebirdclub.com. That's our website. We don't yet have a mobile app. We'll eventually get there, but freebirdclub.com is where they'll find everything they need to know about us. And, and our website is improving all the time as well. Um, in fact, we're, we're looking to release a new homepage in the, in the next week or two. Uh, they'll also find us on uh, Facebook, um, Freebird Club. Just, just search. You'll find us there. We have a nice following on Freebird, uh, oh, sorry, on Facebook. And, uh, we're looking to expand our socials, but we're we're uh, we're growing into that. Mm. Well, that's great. We're so happy to get the word out about what you're doing, and I certainly wish you all the best. I know that you are affecting lives, you're affecting change in people's lives, and really opening up them up to the sense of connection and the importance of connection. And sometimes you don't know it's missing until you connect. And then suddenly you realize, oh my gosh, you know, I have been lacking this in my life and I'm hungry for it. So I really thank you, um, Peter, for just sharing Freebird Club and, and really for doing what you're doing, you know, that your seed was planted and you acted on it and you continue to water it and let it grow and let it flourish, as we say here on Over 50 and Flourishing. Thanks for being with me today. Thanks a million, Dominique. I really appreciate the opportunity and and thanks for the chat. Really enjoyed it as well. Yes, me too. Thank you, Peter. How wonderful chatting with Peter and getting to know him and his mission. Really, really wish him and the Freebird members all the best in their journeys. If you are enjoying what you're listening to, you like Peter, give it a thumbs up. Uh, Let me know what you would like to see and hear for future episodes of Over 50 and Flourishing. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. Just hit that little red subscribe button and you'll get notified every time I release a podcast, which is on Monday and a YouTube tutorial 
on Thursday. And if you're listening, wherever you listen to podcasts, whether it's Apple or Spotify, please don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share Over 50 and Flourishing with those you know and love. I'm so grateful you're here. I appreciate this community and let's continue to flourish in midlife. I'll see you next week. Thank you.